All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, in your downloads for this tutorial, we've gone ahead and we've entered in one of the images that I've got from last Christmas. So let's go ahead and go to New. Actually, we're gonna go to Open. Then we're gonna come down here to wherever it is that you saved it, totally up to you. Let's go ahead and open this bad boy in Affinity Photo. All right, so this is the photo that came around last Christmas, right? Took this over at my parents' house when I was there for the holidays. So I thought that for this tutorial, we'd use this because there's a nice open section here for the orb that will give a nice reflection on the three areas here. So let's go ahead and grab the ellipse tool. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hold shift. And then because this is a green ball and a lot of it's heavily green, we've got some areas of red. I wanna go ahead and I'm gonna make this a red ball. So I think that I'm gonna kind of make it a darker red right about there. I think that that's in pretty good shape. Now, let's go ahead and call this one a uh, ball. Cool, technical, I know. All right, now let's go ahead and duplicate the background layer. We're gonna duplicate this. We're gonna be bringing it up above the ball. And now this entire thing works on one very specific filter. Go to filter, go to distortion. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go lens distortion. Now we're gonna crank this bad boy up as crazy as we can make it. Okay, I think that we're in pretty good shape there. I just was making sure you see how this is squashed this side. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna apply it. Now, here's the trick. We're gonna take this bad boy and we're gonna move it down inside of here. Now, with our move tool selected, we can position this anywhere we want. We can rotate it a little bit to get the ball kind of where we want it. I think that I'm in really good shape actually right about there, give or take. And now we can take this ball, oops, let's go ahead and reposition that just a little bit. You see how we're getting a little bit there? That'll work. All right, so now we have a ball. It really was that easy. Now I'm gonna go hold, hold shift. I'm gonna come down here. And then we're gonna make sure that if we place it in its final resting place, it's not in its final form yet, don't worry. We're gonna go ahead and move this up a little. I'm gonna bring it down here. And now I wanna go ahead and twist this thing so that I get the reflection kind of where I want it to be. All right, so I'm kind of thinking about the displacement on there. All right, I think that I'm in pretty good shape there. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm happy with how the pattern is working out. Now, the next step, what we're going to do now is we're going to, with the ball selected, we're going to create a mask layer. Now, to do this, we're going to come down to the image. Make sure the image is selected. Add a mask layer. And now what I'm going to do, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to come to my gradient tool and I'm gonna click over on this image. Now, what we ideally want, we want more red on the back side. Now you see how the mask is only applied to the image. We're gonna come over with our mask layer selected. We're gonna come over here and remember black conceals, white reveals. So we're going to now expose a little more of this. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, the other thing that we're gonna do here, with the mask layer still selected, I'm gonna come down to my paintbrush because the gradient fill was part of it, but we still want a little bit of a halo showing. Now, in order to do this part, we're gonna make sure we've got a very soft airbrush we make sure we've got the mask selected and we make sure that the black is selected. We use the left or right bracket key. And now make sure your opacity is down. You do not want to mess this part up. And now we're just going to kind of rim this area here. You see how this kind of adds continuity to the idea that the ball is being reflective whole different way to look at it. 
All right, and then we come down here. And then on the back side, if you were to see it, we could then finish up the illusion. Now, we're going to take this ball now. Oops, let's go ahead and not do that. Control Z. Make sure you grab the whole ball. There we go. And then let's go ahead now and position it right about where we want it. All right, now we want to add a little bit of a halo to this thing, right? Because we want a little bit of reflective light. So now that we got the ball, now we want to create some differentiation around this thing. So what we're going to do here, we're going to come back to our sphere because we still have the ellipse selected, right? We're going to grab effect and we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab an outer glow and we're going to crank that bad boy up. Now, we don't want it to be that opaque, right? We want this to be very, very subtle. So we come down here just like that. And then we don't want it bright white because that will stand out like a sore thumb. We want it to be right around this yellow area here. You see how that's creating a really nice halo that we can use. And now I'm just going to open up my context here and I'm going to see if there's anything else that I can really do here. Let's play with the opacity just a little intensity yeah we can do that and then let's bring up some more whitish light there all right and then we'll drop down the opacity just a little bit all right so that starts us now the last thing that i want to do here i want to come down to the layer i'm going to grab this background layer i'm going to use an adjustment so that we're working non-destructively and background layers traditionally are not quite as bright so we're going to come down here i'm going to just drop the brightness a little bit here and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a little bit of it say we're going to add a little bit of gaussian blur and now a little goes a long way right you don't want to go through and make this thing awful all right just a little bit of fuzzy out of focus all right, now the last thing that we're going to do here, I'm going to show you how to use our 7th Season Studios Flare Brush in order to get some reflections on here to create some bouquet. So these are available in the downloads. It'll show you the link of where to go to get them. There's a five brush starter set. And so we're going to go to this Flare Brush trial. Come down to our Flare Brush, making sure that our brush is selected. Yep. All right, cool. And now, let's go ahead and make sure that our paintbrush is selected. Move this thing up a little bit. And now, what color do we want? We want to be kind of in the whitish area here. Now, in order to make this work, what do we have to do, folks? We have to take a look at our layer structure. We're going to have to add in a pixel layer. All right, and here we go. Now, I always put my flares on the pixel layer because that way I can tune down anything that maybe is a little bit too bold. little bit here goes a long way, right? Go kind of whitish. Bring that up a little bit. All right. Now, if you wanted to turn these down a little bit, can always crank those down. All right. Now, that looks pretty good as is. I'm very happy with that. The last piece here, the kind of I would encourage you to do that might pull this off even further is... You can come up here now, and with the ball selected, you can change the blend modes. Now, you can do a lot of really cool stuff with the blend modes, right? And it really depends on what you wanted to do. So if you find a blend mode that you really like, you can absolutely use it. I always like to play, this is what I call the blend mode game. 
right? Because you're not quite sure what it's going to do, but you don't want to miss out on any of those. Now, if you like the blend modes there, well, we just created the pixel layer. Don't want that. You can come up also to the pixel layers and you can play the blend mode game with the pixel layers too. As an example, going with this linear light, that is awesome. Let's go with color dodge. I really like that. All right, let's go ahead and call it a day here. I hope you learned a little bit about how to make this orb super easy using one filter in Affinity Photo. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, check out our course, Affinity Photo, the complete guide to Affinity Photo below. And we're going to be doing a lot more photo tutorials this year. So like the channel, make sure you don't miss one. All right. And on behalf of Seven Season Studios, I leave you with one very important question. What did you create today? All right, folks. Happy holidays. Give it a shot. I'd love to see what you do. If you have questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments. And we'll see you in the next video. All right. Have a good one.